predict-observe explain sequences were developed 25 years ago, and it was to help scaffold students towards thinking more critically with a greater focus uh, in their observations um, to phenomena that were being displayed to them and to help them develop uh, thinking skills that paralleled, uh, better paralleled those that scientists use when they're looking at the world. My use of POEs actually goes back a very long time to the late 1980s. Uh, John Hasem, my co-author in this project, was actually my science methods instructor. And John uh, was trialing some POEs with our methods classes at St. Mary's University in Halifax. And uh, so my experience as a PO, with POEs was not as a professor initially, it was as a student. And so some of the POEs in the book actually were ones that uh, were developed uh, being used with the class that I was in as a student. I use them with methods instructors. So I, I use them in my science methods course. So when I teach student teachers, I've used them a few times to help them develop their thinking, but also so that they have an example of something that they can use in their own classes with their students. Uh, from that, my students have actually you know, taken one of the POEs from the book and then adapted it for upper grade levels or broken it into segments and, and developed deeper thinking skills about the topic. So I haven't used it teaching kids myself. Um, when John was teaching us about them in our methods classes, they were in a developmental phase and so we were trialing them as opposed to having them proposed to us as something that we could use with our own students. Or at least if we were using, if we were being taught about using them with our own students, that didn't stick. But uh, POEs are kind of an intermediary phase towards uh, working with students in inquiry activities. And so my teaching went into doing full-blown inquiry activities right away. A lot of that, that could happen because I had a lot of experience doing science research myself, so uh, I didn't need to have that middle phase kind of experience with students to help them develop their insights in, with inquiry. Uh, for many teachers, they don't have actual experiences working in science or as a scientist, and consequently, one of the purposes of POEs is to uh, act as a scaffold towards getting teachers to become more comfortable in doing hands-on and investigation activities with students. So part of the goal that John and I have with the POE book is that it will help teachers become more comfortable doing hands-on and investigation activities with students and consequently they might do more uh, open inquiry sorts of activities later on with their students. I guess it all depends on uh, how you conceive what a full-blown inquiry activity is. Um, I mean, even those require some sort of scaffolds to move students into them, but they don't necessarily have to be as structured as POEs are. POEs have a, a structure to them that involves getting students to make uh, a prediction around something that they're observing or a case that's laid out for them or an example that's laid out for them. Um, which could just be descriptive or based on pictures, or it could actually be the materials and the equipment set up in the classroom that gets them thinking about the topic that they make a prediction from. Then the actual activity is engaged in. It can be engaged in in, in several ways by the teachers. Uh, a common way when they first start using them is to actually do it as a demonstration from the front of the classroom and then uh, engage this class of students uh, collectively in a discussion around those predictions. Then they then they see the actual activity, they record their observations, and then the explanation phase, which follows, which is where POE comes from, is where they're trying to develop scientific explanations or explanations based on their experiences for their observations that they made that, make, that could very well be in contrast to the predictions that they had initially. Uh, there's nothing wrong with making a prediction that's doesn't, that isn't supported by the observations. I mean, that happens in science all the time. And what we often do in schools is we, students are hesitant to make predictions because they're afraid they're going to be wrong. But scientists make incorrect predictions all the time. I mean, that's what doing the science is about, is about making a prediction about something and then trying it, and then seeing if you actually get the outcomes that you expect. And if you don't, then go, hmm, I think I have to do something else to try to really understand what's going on here. And so predict, observe, explain sequences are set up so that, um, 
teachers set them up so that students feel safe making predictions about various sorts of things. They defend their predictions, they talk with each other as a class, and then they do the observations and then compare the observations to what the predictions were. Now, the other way that teachers can engage these is to not do it as a class uh, a class demonstration sort of activity, but to have uh, in some schools, a lot of schools would have the equipment so the students could engage them individually. So you'd have small groups of students that set the equipment up according to the instructions, um, having made their predictions, and then do the observations on a, on a group basis. And the teacher would circulate around the classroom and would have discussions with individual groups of students about their observations and how they're making sense of that. that, that having individual students do the observations and manipulate the equipment is moving them towards doing inquiry activities where they're asking, um, ultimately you want them to ask their own questions that are in that topic area, design their own types of investigations, make their own predictions from that, make their observations and then develop explanations about their observations in relation to their, uh, uh, what Make their, own, make their own explanations in relation to the observations that they made for the study that they designed and the question that they asked. Uh, one of the things we've tried to cover in the book is providing the scientific explanations for the teachers about the phenomena that uh, each POE is investigating. Um, an ongoing issue with science education is, is that is that teachers are expected to teach such a broad range of topics. Um, teachers might have expertise in one particular area of science, uh, but they don't have expertise necessarily in other areas. And uh, one of the things we've tried to do with the POE book is, is provide the activities for the teachers to engage their students with, but at the same time also provide uh, detailed explanations of the science so that the teachers are prepared for understanding what the phenomena is that, that's, that they're working with with the students. And then uh, the other part of it is, in quite a number of them, I think, uh, more than, I think it's more than half of them in the book, there's actually, uh, we've tested these uh, POEs with students and recorded the information from those tests. And so we have summary information about what types of answers students come up with. So the very first time a teacher does a POE, um, they have some expectation about what ranges of explanations and discussions the students are going to have, and that helps them mentally prepare for working, working with the activity. Uh, the POEs were part of a large uh, curriculum development project that was being done in, a, in Atlantic Canada called the Atlantic Science Curriculum Project, and it was part of a textbook development uh, project where a textbook for grades seven, eights, and nines were being developed in Eastern Canada. Uh, the POEs were part of that because they were uh, tools that could be provided to the teachers for uh, doing these activities with kids in the classroom. My understanding is, is that there was plans for a second phase of the textbook series that was uh, very much connected into POEs and that that didn't happen. So uh, quite a number of the POEs in the book were developed and tested in classrooms through the 80s and early 90s, but the original purpose for them never actually played out. Uh, so John had them in various stages of development. Uh, um, a number of them tested, a number of them with data behind them, and then some not, some in, in different stages of, of being prepared. And he approached me a number of years ago because now I work as a science methods prof in Halifax in the job that he used to have. Uh, and uh, he asked me if I was interested in helping him uh, take the rudiments that he had for a book, the, the different POEs and the ideas that he had to put together for them and work with them in developing it. Uh, a proposal for a publisher and uh, putting a full book together of, uh, of POEs. So that's how I came to be involved at the later phases. Any teacher I know that's bought the book and has used it has uh, raved about the, the impact that it's had with their students, the, um, how it's helped their learning and how it's helped their, their organization in thinking about how to, how to engage their kids in, in science activities and working with materials and making observations from them and drawing conclusions from those in the classroom. So the feedback that I've received personally has been very, very positive. Uh, also limited in the sense that I live in Atlantic Canada, so it's only teachers that I've encountered in Atlantic Canada that have given me any feedback. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that, that there are um, 
that there's other perspectives on it. I just don't know them. In a couple of cases, people have thought that, that it needed to be broken down into parts more. And they've gone ahead and divide, div, uh, designed their own activities to break uh, a sequence into a, a couple of POEs so the students were scaffolded through the information differently. But of course, I mean, that happens because um, you know, all you can do when you prepare activities like this is, is aim for an average class. Some classes are not average. Uh, I, I mean, there's classes you wouldn't use some of the, the POE sequences with because um, it's the, the concepts that are being dealt with are too fundamental for the students there. They're too, too straightforward and the students don't feel any sense of challenge at all, right? But there are, of course, others that, that are conceptually complex for students um, in uh, lower grade classes or in, in classes that have more have less of a science background or have more difficulty dealing with materials. And in those instances, I've, I've talked to a couple of teachers that have taken a POE from the book and broken it down into uh, simpler steps so their students were scaffolded through the material differently. So to me, it's not a negative that we've received that kind of feedback. It's, it's actually good that the teachers could figure out how to break it into different, into a, a simpler sequence for their students. And um, it's not that we think that we've done anything wrong with the book from not breaking it down into that simple way in the first place, because all you can do is aim at average, you know, like some classroom average, work at POEs for that particular group and accept that sometimes there's going to be students that they don't work for and some uh, for either reason and, and hope that the teachers understand the purpose of the, the sequencing well enough that they can then adapt uh, the, P the POE from the book into something that works for their kids.